Well, hello and good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Wednesday, October 4th, 2023. My name is Tim Marvel, and I am the pastor at the Allen Park Presbyterian Church, and you are watching Pastor Tim's Daily News and Devotions, which is a production of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church. We're coming here on live to you from our Facebook page, which we do Monday through Thursday at 9 a.m., most days, most weeks. And uh, we carve out a time to say hello, to talk about what's going on in the world and how we might approach that in a Christian way. We read four pieces of scripture, asking God, and then we pray that God would deliver his word for us today so that we might go about and live fruitful lives as God wants us to. So how are you today? Uh, here in Southeast Michigan, it is, we're going to be in the 80s again, third day in a row, sunny, and it's like October 3rd, or October 4th, I'm sorry, it's October 4th, and um, it's summer, so I, I put on my summer, some, this will be the last of my summer stuff, because boy, this weekend, we're going to know it's fall, that's for sure. Got a little cold front coming through. How is it where you are? We have folks from all over the country that come in and say hello, join us. I encourage everybody, say hi down in the, in the comment box. Regardless of whether you're here live or you're watching it in our recorded version, either here on Facebook or on our, on our YouTube channel. Regardless of how you get here or when you get here, we're glad you're here. Glad you're here. Boy. Uh, I'll go down here and just say hello to some folks that have already signed on. These are most of our old stalwarts, I'll call you guys, right? The dreadnoughts. Those were Kevin and Chris Vaughn, Sandy Sauerbeck, and my Aunt Mary, good morning to you. Larry and Carolyn Thomas, hello. Margot Davis, Barry Davis. Uh, Libby Walton, hello there. How are you? And uh, Joy. Steve Yamber are with us. I'm seeing, I'm, I'm envisioning a map as I'm going through these things and saying, well, they're over here and they're over there. And Nancy Horvath, hi, Nancy. Hi, happy, happy Ken is with us. Hi, Ken. And Sue Tucker, good morning to you. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. So, wow, we're kind of watching our country's history unfold. I know we do every day. It's just that some days it doesn't seem like there's, but all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know, uh, the fragility of our democracy, I think, uh, was on, on exhibit yesterday with the uh, vacating of the, of the Speaker of the House seat. And um, boy, I'll tell you what, uh, Presbyterians, we're known as, we do everything decently in proper order. So our book of order, how we run meetings, how we make decisions, all those things, very closely related. Well, it is Robert's rules. And so um, whenever we get a lot of Presbyterians together, you have to have a parliamentarian, somebody who says, this is what the rules of the meeting allow or require or don't allow. And um, so I know I have a lot of fellow Presbyterians, some ministers and some lay people, especially people who are stated clerks, who have read the Book of Order that might have been, oh, this is interesting. And I think the rest of us were like, oh my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You know, but for today, we live, right? And um, I think there's something to be said about that uh, today's troubles are enough to, you know, we don't need to worry about tomorrows. So we're going through that today. We're going to live through today in faith. How's that? That's the best thing that I can tell you about the news. About where I see it and where I am. Okay. Judy Sutherland is with us. Hello. I hope you're feeling better. What do we <clears throat> We prayed for you. Continue to pray for you. And uh, we will do that, Judy. Hi, Don Jones and Katie and Joan Riggs, Norma Bentley. Hello. All right, it's 9.02, so we're going to move over here. Uh, well, actually, news. Remember, www.allenparkpres.org is the best way to go there. If you go there, you can find out all about 
the Allen Park Presbyterian Church. You can find out about the Presbyterian Church USA. You can read the vote. All of these things are available, but there's also calendars that tell you what's going on, both in person and online. So uh, as we speak here, uh, we have a Ruth Circle that's meeting. Maybe some folks will be coming to us from that Ruth Circle. And um, we have uh, this evening, we will have an AA meeting that's here. It's a closed meeting, so uh, some of them are open. And, and so if people just want to find out about the program, this is really a closed meeting. Uh, and then we come into tomorrow. Right, with lots of stuff, including our grief share, will be on tomorrow night. Now, I will be here with you today and tomorrow. And then I need to go down to Charlotte, to my Aunt Mary's, where her granddaughter, Kaylee, and her fiance, Alec, are getting married. So, Brant will pray tomorrow, but uh, this is, uh, 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 and then at church on Sunday, still worshiping, both in person and line, online, but the Reverend Charles Sadler II will be here with us, and uh, I encourage you all to be here in person or to tune in. Okay, that takes us over here to our readings, and before I do that, I am going to just do my breathing exercise and discipline, and I looked ahead a little bit, and I'm like, Lord, tough names today, lead me through them, all right, here we go. If you'd like to participate, feel free, just clear away the fog of the day. So we can concentrate on God's word for us. Here we go. All right, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Our first devotion today is Psalm 96. Let's listen for God's comforting word for us today. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. Small g. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The word is the world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for before his coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the earth with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. All right. Are you ready for our historical prophetic reading? Because we're jumping into this one. Continuing on where we've been this week, right? And that is, um, um, that is we're talking about a time, a time in the uh, history, right, of the nation of Israel when it was split, it was the northern kingdom, which was ten tribes, well, really kind of nine tribes, and then there was two tribes in the southern kingdom, which included Jerusalem. And they had different kings, and the northern kingdom had been assailed, right, by Assyria, which was one of the major empires. What were the other empires at the time? Well, the ones that involved Israel the most were the one to the south, which was the Egyptian empire. And these small nations, um, you know, would develop relationships. And some of them were healthy, but some of them became uh, suzerainty, what they call suzerainty treaties. And that means that they weren't equally. It wasn't like, you know, we'll protect, it wasn't NATO, we'll protect you and you protect us. This was, we'll protect you, right? You give us money and we'll protect you. God did not want that, right? So that was a big problem. 
and uh, it was a big, big problem in the Northern Kingdom, and we're moving our attention to the Southern Kingdom, who has got a king called King Hezekiah. So we're going to hear about this. Okay, and Assyria. Let's go. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today out of Second Kings. In the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of King Hoshea of Eli of Israel, King Shalmaneser, Sir, Shalmaneser of Assyria came up against Samaria, besieged it, and at the end of three years took it. In the sixth year of Hezekiah, which was the ninth year of King Hoshea, Hoshea of Israel, Samaria was taken. The king, excuse me, the king <coughs> of Assyria carried the Israelites, or Israelites, <coughs> excuse me, I got to pause. Everything's going on here. <clears throat> oh, thank you. I'm being saved. No, I'm still on. I don't know what that is. It's all right. It'll go. <coughs> Excuse me, everyone. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Saved you. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> that was Rita. She saves me all the time. <laughs> All right, I apologize. <clears throat> How about we start that all over again, all right? <laughs> Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. <clears throat> In the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of King Hoshea, son of Elah of Israel, King Shalmanser of Assyria, came up against Samaria, besieged it at the end of three years, took it. In the sixth year of Hezekiah, which was the ninth year of King Hoshea of Israel, Samaria was taken. The king of Assyria carried the Israelites away to Assyria, settled them in Hala on the, on the Habor, the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. Because they did not obey the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant, all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. They neither listened nor obeyed. In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, King um, Sennacherib of Assyria came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. King Hezekiah of Judah sent to the king of Assyria at Lashish saying, I have done wrong. Withdraw from me. Whatever you impose on me, I will bear. The king of Assyria demanded of King Hezekiah of Judah 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house. At that time, Hezekiah stripped the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the doorposts that King Hezekiah of Judah had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. King of Assyria sent the Tartan, the Rabsaris, and the Rabashaka with a great army from Lashish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. They went up and came to Jerusalem. When they arrived, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is on the highway to the fuller's field. When they called for the king, they, there came out to them Elakim, son of Hilkiah, Hilkiah, who was in charge of the palace, and Shebnot the secretary, and Joah, son of Asps, Asps, the recorder. The Rabbishaga said to them, Take, say to Hezekiah, Thus says the great king, the king of Assyria, On what do you base this confidence of yours? Do you think that mere words are strategy and power for war? 
on whom do you now rely that you have rebelled against me? See, you are relying now on Egypt, that broken reed of a staff which will pierce the hand of anyone who leans on it. Such is Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, all who rely on him. But if you say to me, we rely on the Lord our God, is it not he whose high places and altars Ezekiel has removed, saying to Judah and to Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem? Come now, make a wager with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you 2,000 horses if you are able on your part to set riders on them. How then can you repulse a single captain among the least of my master's servants when you rely on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Moreover, it is without the Lord that I have come up against this place to destroy it. The Lord said to me, go up and against this land and destroy it. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. Man, that was the longest reading that I've ever had because since I had to stop three lines into it and pause, I apologize. Diet Coke is much better for killing a cough than coffee, I found out. All right, what's going on here? Well, this is a critical time in the history of God's nation, Israel, Judah. All right, they've been split. Assyria uh, developed these uh, suzerainty relationships with the northern kingdom, and they took advantage of it. Right, they were paying, getting until they they bled them dry, and then they just took the land. Now, he's looking the same way at Judah, but remember, Hezekiah was considered to be a good king. He did remove the high places. That's where altars that people had set up on their own because they preferred to be there rather than going to the temple. And Hezekiah is trying this reform to pull the entire nation back. Right, and yesterday we heard about he sent people out to the northern kingdom saying, "Hey, come on." Bring people down. We're going to have a revival here. Ezekiel also makes a decision here that we see that he's paying off Assyria, right? Not to go away. So, and then the bully shows up and says, who's your daddy? That's what happens here. And he says, you know, you call on God. Well, look, I, did, I came here without a God to see what I did. You know, so God's being mocked. God doesn't like that, right? But he's, but the words of this guy are calling out Hezekiah and the people for what they really are. And the fact of the matter is, is they're trying to pay off Assyria, but at the same time, they're paying Egypt for their arms. And he says, you know what? You buy up all these arms, but where's your people? Where's your people that are going to fight me? You know? So, all right. Bad times. Bad times in Judah. Let's go over here to our uh, New Testament readings, and this one is, we're continuing on in 1 Corinthians, but we're in the 8th chapter now, and um, talking about how to live as a Christian in the presence of other people, in the presence of other religions. How do you, how, how can you uh, interact and be a change agent in the world? These are the things that he's telling him, and he's talking about things that he believes, right? Uh, so we get a lot of Paul's opinions here, which is important. Paul was pretty critical in the early church. Let's continue to read here what he has to say to the church in Corneth. Now, concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols. We know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods, small g, in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom, all, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. 
We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do, but take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, <clears throat> all who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. We have complete freedom in Christ. What does that mean? Well, the freedom means that we don't need to be bound by um, the laws, right? Not the civil and criminal laws, but the laws um, that were put up about that were designed to prevent uh, people from worshiping God and God alone. And so we heard about this big thing that happened way back when that we just read about in Second Kings. And, and that's only one time in a long history, right? Here it is right here again. So they're saying that newcomers, right? They look to you. These newcomers look to you as mentors. And you know that you can eat any food and it's not going to defile you, even if that food had been offered up to other gods, other idols, and had become, quote, sanctified in that. But you know that that has no power over you, so you can eat that food. But if a weaker person sees that and knows that, they, they're going to have no context to understand that. And it weakens the understanding. So what Paul's saying, even though you have the power within yourself to do all that, understand that you are a role model and he says because of that if i was in a group and they knew that meat was sacrificed to idols and that would be a stumbling block to them if we ate that meat between keeping god as sovereign then i wouldn't eat it there we go not because i can't but just because it's not a good idea and this and and i think that we need to remember that <laughs> you know because we see people look at us all the time and we and but and because this is another very human characteristic is we just put people up on pedestals i mean we admire people because they've got a lot of good great qualities and all of a sudden especially in church work you know they go oh you know that's reverend will you know i'm just making up a name but you know it's like or or Rev, reverend matilda oh they're up on a pedestal right because they speak wisely and they speak comforting and and look at them and and people say they have great lives well you know the fact of the matter is church people are people too and then sometimes when you're up on that pedestal you can fall pretty hard so we need to be humble about ourselves we need to understand that uh, uh, what we say especially what we do is uh, sends messages to people, right, that we might not realize. Okay, here we go. We're going to read uh, our gospel reading out of Matthew, and we're in the seventh chapter, so we're getting to the end of this this great pregame speech. There's a lot of pregame speeches that Jesus gives. There's the one really, really, really big one that he gives in the Garden of Gethsemane on uh, the night that he was betrayed. But he's got other ones, and here's certainly one that they're saying, we're off, we're off. We're off to bring God's word to people. Here we go. This is what he tells his disciples. Jesus says, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the road is easy that leads to destruction. And there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from, their, from thorns or figs from thistle? In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. 
A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who does the will of my Father in heaven. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. I think that, um, you know, we just need to understand, um, you know, I, I, the Presbyterian Church and other mainline churches uh, get a uh, uh, get a rap against them by the evangelical churches, saying, you know, they're not forceful enough in the fact that you need to make a decision for Christ. And and they're not all wrong, right? Because we do tend to take the gentler road, the more sometimes the more well thought out road, right? And so sometimes we lose that fact that, you know, we like, and, I, and I'm the first one that will say, God is in the process of reclaiming his entire creation. And God's desire is that all of his creation will be bundled back to him. But we see time after time after time that, you know what, there's going to be some that won't. There is a coming judgment day. And, and this is my viewpoint on it. I would rather encourage people to get into into a, a better and a higher relationship with God through Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit by living with that God rather than running in, in fear of saying, am I going to be in? So it's just two different flavors of ice cream. It really is, right? And and um, and um, so I don't know if you want to... If, sometimes I get saying, somebody says, looking for a church. You know, I'm looking for a church. And I'm like, well, what are you looking for? Are, are, are you looking for uh, the entertainment value, right? Are you looking for the safety that you can find in numbers, right? Um, the anonymity that, that comes with, but also the social, you know, uh, interactions that come with that. Or are you looking to be grown in the word? And that's the thing is you have to find a church that grows you in the word. And we are Presbyterians, which means we think and sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad right enter through the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to de destruction or the road to perdition that's the other way of put that was a great movie with tom hanks the road to perdition okay you will know them by their fruits and we have a great hymn that we sing i'll finish on that saying that they'll know we are christians by our love okay here we go. We're going to go back over here. We're going to continue to pray for Judy Sutherland. Certainly we will do that. Um, hello, Lenore. Hi, Helen England. Janet Lyons is with us. I think I'm back to where I gave up on it. Lana. We'll see what happens. Hi, Amy Bowerman. I think I got that. Oh. Thank you, Carrie. Hi, Barbara Wolf. We are looking, there was two fires in Southgate yesterday. That's unbelievable. One at a, a 55 and over. Uh, it wasn't a nursing home. It was a retirement condo community, I think. And everybody got out, from what I understood. And we need to pray for Ava. Absolutely. So Judy and Ava are going to be in our, hello, Paul Wolf. Hi, Linda Wolf. Hi, Tracy Kress. Whose birthday was it? Helen. Happy birthday, Helen. Okay. All right. Are we ready? I think I'm done coughing. So I think I can pray. Here we go. Thank you for joining us, everyone, today. Lord. Thank you for your words today. And Lord, what we found out today is that even though we are imperfect, and Lord, sometimes we don't give ourselves the benefit of the doubt. We don't forgive ourselves. So Lord, to embrace the abundant life that you've given, let us know the freedom that we have in Christ. 
And although that is freeing, it also obligates us to walk through the narrow gate. And that means we, when we make our decisions, let us rely on you. And let each of our spiritual fruits just grow so that they may be used for the benefit of your kingdom. So we do thank you for all the people who are employed and are working. We thank you for all the people who are in the process of healing. We thank you for the people who have been called to serve others in their lives. Lord, we just thank you for families that care and love and take care of one another. We want to lift up the sick. So especially today, we want to continue to pray for Judy Sutherland. And Lord, we continue to pray for little Ava, this brave warrior, stronger than any of us. Lord, our prayers might have something to do with that or help with it at least. So continue to strengthen her and her family and deepen their faith. Know all things are possible with you. We do ask all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Amen, all. God bless you. Remember this when I'm not coughing. I love you. God loves you. We all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Let us show you how. And we'll be back with you at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning on Thursday. God willing, and the creek don't rise. Have a great day in the Lord, all. God bless.